This video is going to demonstrate one of the methods for collecting fuel moisture. Fuel moisture is an incredibly important thing to understand when you're talking about anything related to fire. So in wildfire times, understanding fuel moisture is incredibly important for planning and for modeling. And it's often taken every, every several weeks so that you can understand the trends that exist in those fuel moisture numbers and you can start to understand how fire behavior might be affected. Fuel moisture is also really important to collect when you're deciding on whether to complete a prescribed burn or how to create your prescription for that area. And one of the things that's very important in fuel moisture sampling is to use the method that is used for your area. So understand the techniques that are used, the tools that are used, so that when you measure fuel moisture, you're using the same techniques and the numbers that you collect are the, comparable to the numbers that have been collected in the past and will be collected in the future. With fuel moisture, a big thing that we're looking for is trending. So let's take a look at one of the methods used to collect fuel moisture. The method demonstrated here involves using paper sacks to collect your fuel samples and having a scale in the field to weigh your fuel samples right away. You want to put your scale on a flat surface and have it either on the back of a truck or on a folding table. And the first step will be to label your bags with the fuel component that will go in them, making sure, of course, to collect the fuel components that are of most interest to your manager. And you'll want three samples for each fuel type. And then once the bags are labeled, you will put them on the scale and weigh their tear weight and record that on the bag. You'll want to record the weather and site characteristics of your area that you're sampling so that that can be taken into consideration when you're interpreting your fuel moistures. Things like aspect, elevation, slope, and then the weather, of course, all have a big impact on fuel moisture. When collecting live fuel components, it's important that you only sample the needles of a tree or the leaves of a tree so that you aren't mixing different fuel components. You don't want to include sticks in your live herbaceous components since those are going to have different fuel moistures. So make sure to pull those needles off of those branches. When sampling your dead, down, and woody fuel, first of course make sure it's dead, downed, and woody. But then you also want to make sure you're getting a spectrum of different fuel components things that are suspended above the ground, things that are right next to the ground, some with bark, some without bark. So as you go through, make sure, first of all, that you're getting only one size class, breaking off sticks that are a little bit larger than the size class you're collecting, and also taking off any moss that might be present so that those don't affect your fuel moistures. When sampling your litter, duff, and soil, it's also, again, important to get your samples from a spectrum of locations. So you'll want some samples from under the tree and from um, in the exposed areas. And of course, making sure that your samples contain, um, at least for the most part, only that component that you are trying to sample. Make sure that you know, of course, the difference between litter and duff. That will help. For larger fuel size classes, you'll want to cut off six inches from one end and then cut a half inch to a one inch cookie, and that's the fuel sample that you will be drying. Ideally, you'll use a handsaw for this uh, cut, uh, but if you do not have a handsaw available, then a chainsaw will work as well. It might be good to note that a chainsaw was used in case there is some effect from the bar oil. Protimeters are very useful tools for establishing fuel moisture immediately in the field, but it is always a question as to how well they are capturing the actual fuel moisture. So I like to use the protimeter, especially when I'm sampling fuel moisture, so that, that I can compare the numbers that are uh, recorded by the protimeter to the ones that were collected using the drying and weighing method. As with your fuel moisture collections, you want to use the protimeter on a variety of different fuel components and locations, so high fuels that are suspended, fuels that are near, near the ground with bark and without bark. And now it's time to record the wet weight of the fuels you've collected. Here's where it's important to make sure you're organized. So you can have your paper or you can have a, your form an electronic device like we have here, and you'll be recording the wet weight. I like to record the wet weight on the bag as well as recording both the sample number, the tear weight, and the wet weight in my sample form. Then I have two places where that information exists. Now because these samples have been weighed in the field, we do not need to make sure that they are um, prevent we're preventing any moisture from going in and out of the fuel bags, which will happen. We of course are going to try and get these into the oven as quickly as possible, but because they're already pre-weighed, a little bit of fluctuation uh, before they go in the oven is going to be just fine. So we'll put these in a grocery sack and then we'll carry them back to the office. 
If you are collecting your fuel samples in the field and then taking them back to the office to weigh them, it's going to be important that you prevent any moisture from coming into those fuels. Often those are collected in cans like this, and you would probably put some electrical tape around the top, and you would put these fuel samples in a cooler. When you're back at the office, you can put your samples in the oven and you can dry them at around 90 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours. Once they're all dry, you can take them out of the oven and weigh them again for their dry weight and record that information. Every once in a while, you'll come across a number when you dry that seems to be heavier than it was the first time. This is why it's so important to record the information on the bag as well, so you have a little bit of backup information just in case some error in recording was made. And if some money has been invested in your fuels program, you might have access to one of these CompuTrack ovens, which dries your fuel samples in more like 30 to 40 minutes. They're just single sample ovens, but it's really nice to be able to get your fuel moistures right away. Now it's time to calculate your fuel moisture. So in Excel, this is especially simple where you can just press the equal sign and say wet weight minus the dry weight divided by the dry weight minus the tear times 100. And that gives us a fuel moisture of 113%, and that is a live Western Red Cedar, which makes perfect sense. So now I'm gonna just double click here and then I'll drag down to the rest of my columns. And what I can see now is, let's say for a smaller fuel model, fuel component for my hunt 10 hour fuels. This is potentially an error. And we have some ranges of fuel moistures here. And this is where you know how many samples to, to take. If you have a broad spectrum of fuel moistures, then you may need to go and collect more, some more samples. But this will give us something to go off of for how these fuel moistures compare to the fire behavior that we saw on the day of this particular burn. So in conclusion, measuring fuel moisture is something that's very important for wildfire and prescribed fire planning locally, but also important for wildfire and prescribed fire planning nationally. Often fuel moisture values are entered into this system, this national fuel moisture database, and then it's available to other people to look up what the fuel moistures are. All the more reason to take accurate fuel moisture samples.